What's up guys and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. Today I'm going to talk about brushes. Brushes after brushes after brushes after brushes. Critter has probably to me the most amazing rate, ra range sorry, of brushes uh, that I've seen anywhere on the internet and you can make an infinite uh, amount more um, and really start to um, create and um, produce some uh, very good effects and some very um, unexpected ones um, using um, some of these techniques. The image I've got on display at the moment is an image which is uh, composed much the same way as a, a recolor image um, was done. So by taking the layer of a guy in a helmet, which is around about here, um, what I then did was I took then a set of flames um, and place them on the bottom right hand side. They're actually the the basis of the frame actually faces to the right. So if you can imagine um a fire pit of flames coming up from the center. Um I basically rotated it through 90 degrees so then the fire was facing out to the right. So then what I did is I took um a duplication of that layer and I applied um a blue um to that layer. Um then using that um new layer that I created with the blue hue over it. I then posted that to the right. Removing the black background le left me a transparent background above the flames on either side because one's a copy of the other. Then using some extra tools or whatnot I was able to begin to manipulate the image and then finally blending it all together to create the image that you see which is supposed to be um, a guy in an armor is being affected by two spells at the same time, one represented by um, the heat and the light, and one represented by the cold, usually associated with darkness. So that, that was the idea of the image. Why is this relevant to us? Well, if you ever try and um, apply a, a color to an image or anything like that, the first thing you need to really think about is, okay, well, what type of brush am I going to use? Um, why that's important is because when you um, approach shadows on some of the heavier damaged image, you might want to, say, recreate a cheek or um, an ear or, or an inter even more intricate item like hands that are wrapped around an object. And you want to um, be able to apply an effect um, to that um, so you can get maybe a softer color in the center and, and harder amounts of color on the outside, given the illusion that the image is um, physically getting darker. Um, so what I want to do is try and introduce you to the brushes that are available, how to create some of your own, and maybe even try and um, improve your work just by playing with some of these brushes. Now, Photoshop and every other program will do these same functions. However, I do not know how to perform the intricate level of detail I can with Critter with Photoshop. But what I will do is, if it's requested in the comments down below, I will go ahead and make a recording for Photoshop as well. Critter is my preferred program, but I am pretty adverse in um, Photoshop also. So if you need um, Photoshop or anything else, just leave me a comment down below and I will respond to them, don't worry. Um, so everyone that I aim to respond to, whether it's through a personal message or whether I can um, respond to it in a video if it makes more sense to do so. So yeah, don't be afraid, just ask the questions where you can. I hope my um, audio is a lot better this time. I must apologize for my previous video. I had the mic a bit further away some different settings and it didn't seem to pick up all that too well apparently I sounded like I was underwater um, so I'm going to open up um, my image that we shared last time which is a 1950s guy on a bike before and after um, images are here I'm just going to try and locate the um, the original image um, before I went ahead and uh, edited it Okay, man on by PNG. Oh, I think this might be the completed version. I'm not sure. No, here it is. Okay, so again, I must thank David L. Um, I'm sorry, David, I've forgotten your last name. Please, please forgive me. Um, Munden, M U N D E N, David L. Munden. What a guy. He's um he's allowed me to use this as part of my projects. Um, to basically show you guys um some of these techniques, and um to show the work that I do uh, in my portfolio. So, uh, again, thanks to David. Okay, so on the standard set of brushes, we have a um, brush presets over here. We have um, a gel ink pen, uh, pen style, which is basically, if I go ahead and hide the underlay of here just for now, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and select black ink. So we're all um, looking at the same sort of thing. So if I go ahead and um, 
draw a few lines on my screen here um, to do with the black ink. Um, I'm going to do is I'm going to write ink right next to it there in there, some clunky text. Okay, so we've got our ink tool here. Now, what does this comprise of when we're actually physically looking at it? This comprises of a round dot, which is expanded the more pressure we give if you're on a pen, or if not, it's the um, the speed at which you move on a mouse. So you can create the same effect um, with a mouse. It's just down to the speed that you'd actually physically use. This t this tip will not um, be affected in any other way. That is a noise I'm not actually used to. Okay, my computer just made a noise I'm really not used to. That was um, really strange. Oh, streamer mode is enabled on um, on another program. Okay, first time I've heard that, but I'll take that under advisement. Okay, so yeah, this is ink. Now, ink can be applied in in several different ways, and we look at like fine liners. Oh, look here. So here you go. This is exactly the same, but it's based. Um, on a smaller amount. A fountain pen also has um, directional keys um, when set um, to uh, if your pen is compatible to allow you to um, create different effects on different angles. Oh, it's got a bit of it in. No, it hasn't. Um, so the idea basically being is if you're moving north to south, you'll create one effect, and if you're moving left to right, you'll create a slightly different effect, and then the variance between um, create uh, different effects which I'm just going to recreate with a bit of pressure technique here. So you start off light and get heavy, there you go. So you can begin to adjust these so these move at a, a more constant rate according to how your hand moves. Everybody writes different so I'm not going to be able to tell you how to set up the computer directly for you. Um, that includes mouse, mouse movements as well. It's down to your own speed and your own settings. Knowing where those settings are, if you need to know in uh, different operating systems from Windows uh, 7, Vista XP and uh, 2000 as well as uh, Windows 10. I'll be able to um, go ahead and add video so you can see how to adjust those settings. Um, so we've got the, um, the ink style brushes, and as you can see, these are made so you can um, basically do heavy outlines on items, um, draw some funny faces if you if you really wish to do so. Um, also create um, handwritten text um, which allows you to create more sort of soft effects especially if you're if you're doing a mouse what you tend to do is you tend to go like that and you click uh, along the line you you do create a, a nice arc but with a with a pen you can sort of you can get it a bit better and maybe a bit more accurate and as you can see it's it's a full line um that's really the the only difference as you can see with a mouse you you tend to make the, the left and then down and then left and then down. You can iron that out the more you use the mouse. Don't be worrying about that. So um, why do I point that out? Because sometimes when you do these type of images, you're going to go over the edge. That's fine. We can use the eraser tool later on, and I can even show you some different eraser techniques um, which allow you to create different effects and also take use of the um, of the color and make use for the fact that you've actually got a grayscale image behind it. Um, just some great effects um, when trying to um, update an image. Um, so what I need to do, obviously, for you guys is to grab... Um, sorry, <laughs> David's talking to me because he's just seen the other video. Um, yeah, what I need to do is I need to grab an image here that I can um, begin to play with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a, a new Google tab here. And I'm going to type in here black and white image. Okay, black and white. Um, I'm gonna, actually, we're going to say photo here. So we're going to say photo. No, not photography, just photo. <clears throat> okay, so I don't really mind what the subject matter is, but um, let's just say we're going to take this, um, any one of these will do really. Um, I'm just going to right click, copy the image. Um, so these are free stock photos, that's it. one thing to note. If you're looking for images that you can play with online and share, by the way, you can drop these um, settings down and um, increase the um, the tools at which your, your sets are searching with so if you click tools and then come down here you're going to be able to say um 
labeled for use with modification or just labeled for reuse so we're going to say labeled for reuse and our image is still there so that means that we can we can use this image on the internet with accreditation to who it originally belonged to um what are it so who does it belong to it belongs to pexels there you go grayscale a photo of the human eye so thanks to him for allowing us to use his image okay so what we're going to do quickly just go to edit and we're going to paste that so we grab that off online there and um, using the manipulation tools here we're just going to shrink this eye down so it fits a bit more on our page here we go it's fantastic okay so we're going to get rid of that other layer there and we pasted our new layer on top so we're going to look at some um, brushes and coloring techniques and why they make a difference and where and when to actually physically use these um, different types of brushes and you're going to eventually see why you would use that type of brush my neatness isn't going to be a thing here guys and um, i will show you the technique to go ahead and um um edit those um mistakes in order for you to eradicate anything that you don't want to be shown in the image um obviously the more time you spend on an image the better it will be um and the the more t time the more care you take with it the the longer it's um it's going to take it's, it's just going to be a factor of um, what you're doing oh right here we go so stop me from waffling on if you can right okay so down here i'm going to uh, start to take some of my favorite brushes which i've actually singled out um in one of these sections and remember this is another thing you can actually fix it. here we go so okay this is a brush i've physically created itself it's solid in the center and it's softer on the outside so we'll go ahead and show you how to do that in a short while um why and i'll also point out why that's important um so this brush is made to work essentially like um, a pencil. You know, if you first draw a line on a page, it's quite soft. If you draw over the line and over the line and over the line, it's going to get heavier and heavier and heavier. So let me just show you a, fa uh, a way of actually physically seeing that. So let me get a, a nice bright white color, which is going to go directly over this eye and then show us exactly what we mean. So don't forget, guys, I'm using a pen, but it doesn't matter whether you're using a pen or a mouse for this. It's going to produce the same effects. Okay, so if I lightly begin to stroke the page, here we go. You can see the way I'm creating a, a white line, but look at the more times I go over it, the harder it's getting. If you can see that, so it's like coloring with a pencil. Back in the old days, yeah. Okay, so how we um, we begin to interact, and this is um, a big thing here. How we begin to interact with our image then can change because then we can approach it almost like we used to approach um, coloring a book or anything like that of the past. Now, as you can see here, I'm being very, um, very, uh, let's just say lazy uh, about <laughs> what I'm actually physically doing. I'm not going for accuracy. Um, with a pen, obviously, it's it's incredibly easy now. You can load versions of a uh, critter onto your smartphones, onto your tablets, and um, there is a version out there that you can download. So you can then begin to use maybe a soft touch pen that you get from um, from stores. Let me just see whether I can. Um, let's get a stylus pen. This to you on a stylus. Pen. Yeah. Here we go. So. What we're looking for these um these are the type i hold right now so this is um for the full passive uh, reactive screen which basically means i can draw on it with a with a fine point stylus i apologize for the train okay so then we've got the the soft touch as well here which is you can use on your mobile phone um the technology within Critter isn't going to work as great with this, but it's a rudimentary way to get on and see whether the investment of the screen is something for you um, and definitely something to look into into the future. Um, OK, so why does this affect our color and techniques? OK, so I'm going to now pick um, to get rid of that and go ahead and install a new layer. OK, so what we've got is we've got a mixture of um, very um, deep positions on the on the skin which are very very dark in color and very very light in color now one method to actually physically do this if you have a solid brush is so let's just take a solid brush for a minute and um, we're going to set the layer to a color layer so now this is going to just color the layer underneath so it's inherent to the alpha so if we then tick this button that's going to stop it from spilling over the sides but won't stop it from spilling onto itself if this image there it's going to allow it to be there so we still have to stay within the guidelines. Okay, so 
now I've got this digital color mixer down the bottom. I don't really need this, so I'm just going to get rid of this. So now I've got this set up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start to paint on a bit of color. Okay, so I'm using um, some basic mismatch colors at the moment. This isn't about, as I say, accuracy or creating um, something that's really, um, really on on the nose kind of thing. So okay, so now if I come back and use a a lighter pressure. Using the uh, using the stylus, I can create a, a lighter image um, going across the the top there. Okay, so that's it. it covers that bit there. Okay, so now I've got this um, this area that I can um, create. Do I need to do anywhere else? Would I do this bit? No, because this bit's pink. If you look at an eye, this all this bit here is pink. So we don't need to do this area. We're going to be looking at this area here underneath the eye. This has got a, a bit of contextual shading to it. So that comes in sort of like that. Okay, so as you can see, each time I'm going over it, it's making it thicker and thicker in those areas, and I want that to happen. Um, sorry, this one's going thicker. This one's um, coming in solid. Um, but we'll show you the, the different way. I apologise there. I've got that slightly wrong. So yeah, this is the ink method. So obviously we're drawing in the um, the solid. So you can hear my mouse being used. It's going to give you exactly the same effect. Okay, so what you need to do um, with this is to blend this in then with a, another layer which is going to be lighter than the layer that you've applied in order to make the two-tone of the skin come come out so what we're going to take is we're going to take maybe two shades higher of the skin still using the ink brush we're going to then go ahead and we're going to paint on um some quick skin so here we go some quick skin fast as we can i say this isn't about accuracy this is just about showing the the ball the uh, basis of the uh, of the technique. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and shade it all in. We're going to shade in the inside of the eye. It doesn't matter if we go over; it's all fine. Say so you come back later. These are all in layers, as you can see. So we're not going to um, we're not going to lose um, one layer over another. So there we go. We're going to pull this in. We're going to get this in as best we can. Although we're not trying to be. If we miss a couple of bits, I apologize. Um, just going to inherit that to Alpha. Now you can see what that does right there. There you go. So you can see the fact that if there isn't an image below it, it's not going to let it be there. So it's going to say, well, there's nothing there, so it shouldn't be there. Grand. Okay, um, let's go back to this one. I'll put two things on two opposite layers. Going back to your layer, your correct layer is going to be a thing with any of these programs. You will get used to, to working with it. Okay. So. Let's go on there. We're just going to paint that bit in there. We have really got not much to do here now on the skin. Let's just on the skin. Sorry, let's get that bit there. Okay, so this is the ink technique. This is the solid um, inking technique. And what we're going to do now is that looks very harsh and thing. But we're going to flip that to color. And now you're going to see what I've done. Okay. So let's get this bit in. Down here, right, awesome, and it's also just coming back up like that. Okay, so what what have I effectively ever done? I've applied a um, a deeper set of color to this area, which is allowed to give the um, the perception of more depth um, to the skin, and um, give you that um, real bounce factor. But again, this is done with the ink and technique, so this level of detail can be achieved with a mouse. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer and I'm going to start looking at the pink of the actual eye itself. But I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to change how I'm doing it. And I'm going to use the brush that I've created. Okay, so this is a soft edge brush. This is meant um, for um, anywhere between colouring to um, to outlining something um, as best as possible. So we've got our pink here, we've got a new layer, and what we want to do is we want to highlight the inside of the eye line because that's pink. Um, you know, the, the inside of your skin is pink. If you if you haven't opened your mouth before, you go ahead and open that and uh, have a look. It's all going to be pink. Okay, whether you're black, white, anybody, it's all pink inside. Okay, so we're all the same there. Right, so here we go. We're going to add that in. We're just going to make a, a quick outline of the edge, just like this. Color it in. Okay, so then that's a bit more size. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin to lightly 
um, shade this in. Here we go. So there we go. We're going to come around here. Again, this is not about accuracy, you guys. This is just about showing you um, the extremes of a of a technique. Um, here we go. We got some here, and now what we're going to do is we're going to apply some lightness to here. Don't forget that this area is quite dark, but we need um, some sort of color in there. So we're going to keep going deeper until the um, the line in the corner here almost disappears. That's that's your that's our aim here because we don't want that solid line to be necessarily visible right the way across the image. So we're going to be blending that in. We're going to be blending it. We're going to be blending it. Just like that, okay. So the shadow is created by getting thinner and thinner all the way to this point. Now, why have I shaded to that point? Um, the reason being is is it is actually pink up to that point, even on your on your own eye. The light within itself bleaches um, a lot of it out, um, which makes the the iris seem a lot wider than what it physically is. But the shading is there, and it does affect, and that's how what gives you your your, your deep um, eye sense. So what I'm going to do now is switch this over to a color. Okay. So as you can see, there's some bits that are missing. It's not necessarily the perfect color match. That isn't a problem. We can go ahead and um, apply a filter layer to it um, in order to change it. Or we can just go ahead and select a new color and repaint it. But for the purposes of this, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go ahead and shade these um, few bits that I've missed right here. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've the shade of around here. Okay, we can also do some other slight effects to this in order to um, to reduce the amount. We can also pull down the opacity of this layer um, in order to soften the amounts um, that we physically do. But there is a very um, strong pink which runs on the underside of the eye, which is going to be there anyway. Again, don't worry about the overcasting of layers. We can come back and edit that in several ways, which I want to show you shortly. Um, but right now, all I want you to do is note the fact that we place some pink along the bottom and along the top of the eye. Okay, so look at that. Now, because we've done all that, we've identified where all the separate pieces are because we've gone ahead and colored them and really looked at them. We've identified, oh, we missed this bit. Great. We work in layers, so we can just go back to this layer, reselect our color, and then go, oh, I forgot this bit right here. And then there it go. Look, it falls straight in. It's all organized, all nice and neat. Okay, so there we go. We've got that bit there. We want to just make sure we get this little tiny bit here because it wasn't quite right. And maybe we want to check this bit and this bit. And oh, look, there's a bit there. And Okay, so again, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just trying to um, show you a technique. Um, so this has been achieved by using the soft edge brush. As you can see, that the two different methods blend together really nicely. The solid color of the skin, because it's the main color, was used um, by placing the ink um, style technique down. The, um, the second one was placed using the sketch style technique. Um, now, the sketch style is based on any one of these pencils. So these will work exactly the same way. And these are in Photoshop and they're in most um, applications. Um, available today. If not, it's basically a simple um, method of searching for your um, program and then type um, downloadable brush tips afterwards. The Some of the sites you navigate may be more or less difficult. Um, again, if you're looking for specific type of things, um, drop me a message and I'll try and see whether I can answer and um, respond to you and um, get you the help that you need. Okay, so Moving back to this, I'm going to remain in Sketch because Sketch um, tools to me are absolutely fantastic for colouring with. And I'm going to go ahead and um, take a look at this um, iris right here. And uh, again, not really worry about what's going on around. We will sh show you some uh, blending and smudge techniques to um, to get over the uh, the excess. So the eye is mainly comprised of a deeper um, colour around the outside and then all these flexors and muscles which connect um to the back of the retina um contract to perform um not to perform to produce the um the pupil in the center um 
Now, this is obviously an extreme version of what you see in most photographs, but it's good to see it up close and see what you're actually looking at. Um, so, in a nutshell, how these are usually coloured is like this. In the centre is a, is a dense amount of colour where all the, where all the fibres which are slightly coloured in uh, the colour you see of people's eyes is like there. Okay, and then the second amount of that same colour goes around the outside about there. Okay, so now we want to change this. This is obviously a colouring line, so you can see now it's added a stunning bit of colour to the outside. Again, don't forget we can adjust the opacity. So we can say, oh, we want it to affect it that much or that much. So I think around about 43% is a good amount. That's producing a nice amount of colour there and it's given us a, a nice effect on the edge of the eye. Um, we can um, adjust this, don't forget, um, using the transform tools. If we've kind of missed a little bit or we just want to, you know, we've done it on the outside of the eye and maybe we want to take advantage of the blackness of the, uh, the image below in order to um, make our point of the eye uh, a bit more extreme. Again, don't worry about overcast because it'll disappear. So, okay, we're having a look at that. Okay, so here's our first opportunity to have a look at the uh, erase tool because we're going to need to go ahead and straighten this up. We're going to switch back to the brush tool. We're going to select our eraser tool. Now I've still got the um, the sketch um, eraser active here, and the beauty about this is in smaller increments I can begin to um, to kick it back or I can stab into it and really get rid of um, everything at once but I don't really want to do that so as you can hear I'm using my mouse so these techniques work with a mouse not just because I've got a stylus does it work um, so there you go you can see the fact that I've now got this nice blue hue in the center you can add everything to multiple and multiple layers but I think usually the outside outer, outer ring and the inner ring go together and the inside usually goes on another one which is below the outer ring so once you've decided what your main um, center color will be, um, what you need to do is usually go two colors um, brighter or two shades brighter um, to get your next color that you're going to use. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to quickly just color this in. Okay. Again, this is in a normal right now, so um, it's going to change in a second. So what I want to do is cover it. And if you notice what I'm actually doing is I'm coloring in the direction of the shadow. Make sure that you do this. Um, there are finer points within an image that you, you don't make out um, individually, but you can see overall, if you ever looked at a really good shading of a picture, um, somebody who um, shades following all the contours and, and reproducing those contours really does um, do a much more... Um, invigorating job than somebody who doesn't so okay what i'm choosing to do here is i'm choosing to pick out some of the darker lines on the edges and i'm i'm giving it a bit more pressure and a bit more color in those areas and bending towards the center um so these are like the the heavy blue streaks that you're going to see going into the center of the eye one side of the eye is always going to be dark one third of the eye is going to be bright and the other two thirds basically blend between the other two colors which are present within the eye. Okay, so let me just uh, go ahead and flip this to a color. Okay, so we've got some basic color within the eye there. We could probably do a little bit of a better job by just uh, coloring these bits in. Let's get that bit down there and maybe, yeah, maybe we'll clean up this bit down here. Okay, so we don't really want um a full color layer we're going to let the uh the previous layer as i said break through and uh, begin to edit our image so this is working beautifully up here but not so down here because we've got a solid edge so what i want to do is i want to stick the um size of my brush up way way big because that what that's going to do is because there's a gradient um within my brush so from the center of the brush to the outside of the brush so the center is hard don't forget and the outside is weak as you can see from the image down the bottom right. So the center of my brush is really hard and the outsides are weak. Now why does that affect it? The larger my brush is, the larger that larger that gradient takes place in. So I know that the outside is rather weak and the inside is really, really heavy. 
Um, now I've got a watch I don't hit um, the the other layer when I do this, um, but I'm gonna have to shrink that down in order to make sure I don't. But what you want, what we want, is the largest size we can get inside of there, so we can create um, um, a filter effect. So for I think for us that's going to be around about the 194 mark. Yep, there we go. All right, so we're gonna go back to our previous layer. We're gonna go ahead and hit E, which is just gonna bring up your erasure tool. You see that flipping at the top there. Um, so you can go ahead and click that or, or select the erasure tool. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start to slowly um, click into this here. And we're going to um, just dial back the uh, the amount um, that would alter in the image. So, okay, we appear to have got that. That's fantastic. Um, so this is set to a norm right now. If the opacity is down, would it be set it to a color? There we go. So there's what we didn't do before, and now that's give us that beautiful blue color mix um, on the external point of the eye, giving it a real depth look. Okay, moving on. Within, um, let's just search for this online so sh to show you exactly what I mean. So we're still in images, we're still in there. So we're going to search eyes. Okay. Um, what I want you to note is this is a great example, or even our blue example here is grand. So as you notice, there's the dark blue rim that we placed on before, and then the lighter blue in the center. And now what we need to do is we need to recreate um, stippling within the eye, which is just a, a different um, color, usually a contrasting color, which is um, really stands out. Um, and it's worth noting actually that um, this becomes uh, usually more prevalent in older people to young. Um, although young people can have it, it really is dependent on the, on the, uh, the person themselves. But it's generally, even people who don't have it at birth can develop um, more of this discoloration over time. Um, with a, a quick note, as you can see, there's lots of baby shots here, and it's not really present, um, the off-color, in most of the baby shots. Okay. As you can see in most of the more adult shots, the discoloration becomes more and more prevalent. Okay, you see it's an example after example, the the, uh, the discoloration taking place. Now this the pupil's very wide here, so the discoloration is very small amount and just stretched around there. So again, another baby picture, no discoloration. Slightly older, zero discoloration, but I have a feeling that that image has been doctored at some point. Um, so here's an adult, still visible slightly here. So I think I've got the point across the fact that it's actually physically there. So what we're going to actually physically do now is we're going to go back to our image. We've got a new layer. We're going to go ahead and say I'm coloring in, and now we're going to go ahead and select a contrasting color. Again, these colors aren't really the best of the matches. These are just to emphasize, hey, this is what you can do, and this is what you need to do in order to create um, that next level step image. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to, um, again, with my mouse, so you can see the, uh, the effects can be achieved with both mouse and um, stylus. I'm just going to go ahead and pick a few of these, and I'm going to highlight them. Now, what I'm doing here can be applied to so many things. Don't just think of it as like an, an, an eye. Um, uh, this could be the engine parts from our previous video. This could be... Um, uh, a toy. Uh, this could be somebody's, you know, um, any part of somebody's face. Really, if it's not really at a a given thing, then it has to be um, one thing. So, just keep adding this, keep adding this. And um, what I've actually forgot to do is place this below um, the blue layer, uh, the center layer, which we we, we need to do. Um, again, just keep picking out lines, keep picking out lines. Um, the more you pick, the more time you take. But if I was doing this properly, I would probably, you know, reduce the size of the brush and go ahead and get right in there and not cover those um, those um, center points or lines. But again, we're just here for example. Okay. All right. So this area, I really do want um, yellow, but I don't want it as yellow as these. These are the really striking bits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my opacity which is your transparency to 50%. Now, bearing in mind, this is going to be 50% over what we reduce the main um, amount by. So that will only be 25% if it's 50% here. Okay. 
So I've got 50% and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight this um, inner area like this. Come down here. This is um, I want this to be dark. I want this bit to be dark. I'm going to reach right up to there. These are going to be these few specks again, random bits out here. And down the bottom here, maybe a bit that comes right out like this. It's it's really down to your interpretation at this level. Um, but just be aware that you can apply um, a 50% shadow over 50% color over shadowed layers, and as you can see, it allows you to maintain that deep depth and um, still apply a small amount of color to tinge the black um, to whatever you like. So, as I say, we said before, I'm going to reduce this down. Um, again, you've got to imagine there that we've spent maybe a little bit more time on um, picking out some of these um, iris details here. It just really is for the idea. So, okay, we've got this um, sort of thing going on. So now we've got something that really does start to uh, come together and look like an eye, but we can really see the fact that it's been tampered with, especially in the areas like here and areas like here. We can obviously see the fact that this is um, overrun here too, which makes it um, not so realistic. But we can now go ahead and maybe um, address those. So we've got the opacity set to 50%. Don't forget where this is set. Um, this is going to be really important. So we want to take 100% um, away right now because we definitely hit the, um, the eyeball down here and we want to remove that. So if you've forgotten which layer you're on, just go ahead and make it invisible. Make it visible again. It's going to become very clear which layer you're working on very quickly. So we know, okay, so there's our pink layer. It's layer 7. We're going to head, select that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the edges. I'm going to wait for the train, sorry. Right. I'm going to go for the edges of both the top and the bottom layer um, that are affected um, by this area. So let's just identify which that one is, which is this layer here, and it's going to be the layer directly um, adjacent to it. Because we did the one things one after another because we're very sensible. Okay, so we're going to select this layer. Now, don't forget, we've got 100% opacity. So 100% opacity is going to eradicate the layer completely. There it goes. Absolutely gone. Look, there it goes. It's going to replace it 100% with yellow. But if we knock it down to 54% yellow and then begin to paste over that area, it's only adding a hue of yellow. Now, transpose that into your eraser brush what it's going to do is it's going to take 50 percent of this edge away so what we're going to do is lightly stroke into it and we're going to take away 50 percent of that edge layer okay i'm actually and there we go great example i'm actually on the wrong layer so i've gone ahead and selected the correct layer now and we're going to start to work away 50 percent of this layer. there we go there it goes so as you can see the two layers are now blending into each other quite nicely and you can choose the, the overlap layer. And this is why I was saying to you before, it, it's not necessarily a bad thing to go over because you can begin to use that to your own advantage later on when just tidying up your image. And the more time you spend doing this, the, the greater the image is going to turn out. And we all know what, some of us have more time, some of us have less, but it's um, always worth noting. So what I've done there is I've gone ahead and 50% of the, the under layer on this next bit because what I want to be able to do then is just come back in and really begin to mow down this um, pink and bring it back. Now the pink is still present within the skin, I must say. So we don't want to eradicate it completely, but we do want to um, go ahead and knock back the amounts. Now what I've just identified there is that the, um, this layer here is responsible for creating a very um, strong, stark line um, at this point, which I really want to and kick back so again we just select a layer we select our opacity which is down, down to about a third of light and i'm gonna give that a quick rub get rid of too much harshness there okay so we still got a bit of a line we're not gonna like that but um for now it's not really having much of an effect when we pull back so we're kind of happy well i'm kind of happy with that right now if you want to play with that a bit more that's up to you okay so here we go again. I'm going to just go ahead and stick this 30% brush in and really come in down here and start to remove this pink. 
and then I'm going to bring it up to 50% and I'm going to get a bit closer to the line which disappears but I'm not going to get all the way there I don't think okay there we go so this is a great way now when you've got this um, to just blend the um, one into the next so we get rid of some of that okay and uh, again, shadowing lines. Um, if you notice what I'm doing is I'm using the shadows as an opportunity to, to introduce some very subtle lines within my shading in order to give you shape. Um, to introduce the fact that there, there is a round eye there and there's, there is a, some shape to the actual image itself. Um, isn't that getting rid of that? Shading techniques can be a whole video um, on itself. Uh, we're trying not to go into too much detail. Okay, there we go. There's the um, finishing result. Um, now, say we can go ahead and start blending these in, adding a bit more to the pink layer and then the skin layer, bringing that meeting to almost um, this kind of standard up here, where you can see the, the thin line of the pink is representing the the inside of the eyelid, and the outside is um, representing the outside. So, if we flip to the black and um, go ahead and put a layer right on the top, we can begin to um, to trace in these sort of lines here. Okay. And then we can we can add those to I'm just gonna set that to colour. Um and you can see the way it's beginning to combat some of the colour we've based behind it and uh, really bring it back into shape which is excellent so we did that right the way actual round the eye itself we could then reproduce those results and um, again try and grab a reference image of what you're looking at and what you're trying to recreate have fun with it use the blending techniques remember that the sketching brushes are going to give you a soft edge and the inks are going to give you hard edges try not to use the um the paint um style applications when trying to do color re-imaging they they place on it on a gradient and can when two um sides meet each other they can begin to blend and that's just going to create a whole nightmare for yourself stick with the the sketch brush which is going to apply the paint in layers as you would do with a with a pencil so try and think of it that way you're using a pencil but best of luck any comments um please do them down below and i'll try and answer any any and all questions that do come in like hit the old subscribe and the bell button in case you uh, you want to see any future videos that come along if you've got any thing that you want to be answered please go ahead and uh, leave me a comment at the bottom there and i definitely will be in touch in time but uh, thanks for joining us and uh, come join us again Bye bye